Hey guys, this is going to be the Biology 1 Daily Questions Chapters 2 and 3 review session and this will prepare you for the upcoming test. So the first day we went over water and what water, it, water is and what kind of qualities it has. So the first question here, explain and draw the structure of water. And so what that would look like, see if we can get my pen up here, I cannot. Okay, now I think I have the pen. Um, so explain and draw the structure of water. And water is a polar molecule. The um, oxygen and the hydrogens share electrons, but they do so in an uneven pattern. So we end up with a positive end and we end up with a negative end. So that's what our structure of water would look like. This is called a polar molecule because there's an uneven distribution of charge. So that kind of defines here what is a polar molecule. It has an uneven distribution of charge. And that just means it's charged. Uh, it can be um, an ionic bonded uh, element that then has a charge to it because it has given up or taken electrons. That could be a possibility as well. How is it different from a nonpolar molecule? Nonpolar has no charge. So why is polarity important for water? Well, water um, can dissolve a lot of different things and it dissolves other polar molecules, which means it can dissolve a whole lot of things that's in our world. And so that becomes very important for us in that water makes up the majority of living things. It can dissolve a lot of the different things that come in contact with it, um, which allows it to be then distributed throughout the body for use. Um, explain cohesion and adhesion in regards to water. So cohesion is an attraction of like molecules and this happens between water to water. And this occurs because of hydrogen bonds. And as a reminder, those hydrogen bonds go between one water molecule to another. So um, if we have this water molecule and we have another water molecule, this bond here is called a hydrogen bond. And that allows for or causes cohesion. Adhesion is an attraction between two unlike molecules. And if you remember back in the lab, what happened with this is we put a drop of water on some wax paper, turned it over, and there should have been at least some of that drop of water that remained. Uh, and so that is the attraction from one um, molecule to a different type of molecule, water to that paper. This is important when it comes to capillarity um, and the ability for water to travel up a narrow tube against the force of gravity. So cohesion, water molecules attract together, adhesion, water to the side of the plant. Um, one example of how water helps maintain homeostasis, um, one would be uh, maintaining a constant temperature and Water takes a long time to change temperature. A lot of heat has to be added or taken away in order for it to go one degree change. And that helps maintain homeostasis for living things. Also, something like capillarity for plants, the cohesion adhesion um, would work as another example. Okay, so that was day one of our notes. Day two of our notes dealt with carbon. So why is carbon uh, vital to all living things? Carbon is an organic molecule. Organic molecules have carbon in them. That's how I really should say it. Um, and so carbon is found in all living things. The process of producing a large carbon molecule is dehydration synthesis. Or we also called it condensation reaction. And this is when we remove a water molecule 
and then um, it attaches uh, two two monomers will attach together. So causing two monomers to attach. And this could be more than two monomers, but we showed it in a picture using two monomers. So if we do the opposite of that, describe the process of breaking apart a large carbon, carbon molecule. The opposite to that is hydrolysis. And this is when water is added. And when that water molecule is added, it breaks the bond. and um, goes back to smaller monomers. So it breaks the bond of a polymer um, and it, go, it goes back to the monomer. Um, I can show you that again here. So we had in one case that we showed um, we had Basically, this hydrogen got pulled out and this OH got pulled out, produced water, and then these two linked up with that oxygen there. So you can see that process. And this was be making the polymer. We pulled out a water and um, allowed for those two to make the bond. The opposite of that would be taking this water molecule and putting it back in to the places that it goes. And it breaks the bond and causes them to go back to their original individual monomers. Okay, this question four, we didn't talk about a whole lot. Um, you need to know what the energy molecule is. It's called ATP. It will come up in a lot of future chapters. And you just need to be able to recognize it. It means energy. And it's adenosine triphosphate. So make sure you look back over that. Um, the key part there is just knowing that ATP means energy. Okay, the next day we did our molecules of life. So name the four molecules of life and name the monomer that relates to each of these molecules. So we have, these are all in your notes, but carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and nucleic acids. Okay, carbohydrates are monosaccharides. Proteins, amino acids, fats are fatty acids, nucleic acids are nucleotides. Okay, uh, number two, what is the name of the bond that holds proteins together? This is a peptide bond. And that's for proteins specifically. So amino acids are held together by a peptide bond. Why are enzymes important and how do they work? Um, enzymes speed up a chemical reaction. Very important in our bodies. Otherwise, chemical reactions would take too long to occur. So there, there are hundreds of them in our bodies at one time working all the time. How do they work? They're specific to a certain type of reaction. So each enzyme is specific to a set of reactions. It will continue to work. So once it is used, it's not used up. It will reform back to its original shape and be used again. Um, and an enzyme will accept, it has an active site that accepts um, a molecule or maybe two individual um, compounds. And it will either make the bond for them in that chemical reaction or it will break apart the bond and it releases it back to the body to be used. Once that enzyme gets used, um, the active site will reform back to its original shape and it can be used again over and over and over again. Okay, two things that affect the rate of an enzyme. Um, you did some of these in lab. Temperature and pH level were two of the things that you guys looked at in lab. Okay, and that's pretty much the end of things that we covered. I want to make sure as well that you look back over um, the molecules of life. Definitely um, look over 
the lab information that we did with biuret, iodine, and Benedict's solution. Look back over that and have an idea of what happened in each one and what each one did and what they tested for. For example, iodine tested for starches and it would turn a deep purple if it had a starch in that. So make sure you look back over those three. These were from lab. Um, take time to look at purposes of carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and nucleic acids. Um, for instance, um, where are they used? Carbohydrates are sugars, simple sugars, complex sugars. Proteins help make muscle, hair, skin. Um, fats, we have good and bad, unsaturated fats, saturated fats. And then nucleic acids, um, nucleotides. We do need to talk about this a little bit. Nucleotides have three main parts. We have a phosphate molecule. We have a sugar. And then we have what's called a nitrogen base, and they have different shapes, but we'll show one there. Okay, and look back over that shape. You need to understand that concept. That was also on one of the review sheets. Um, nucleic acids make our DNA and, and RNA, and so that's why that is also important. Um, so be sure to look back over the review sheet, follow all those questions as well. This is kind of our key points that we went over in class with our notes. Um, and if you have any other questions, please ask. Good luck studying.